and welcome to Showcase, TRT World's daily arts and culture programme coming to you from Istanbul. In this special edition, we'll take a look at Syrian artists around the world. The war in Syria is complicated, messy and cruel. Millions have risked and lost their lives in search of safety and peace. Many of them have been artists. Those who survive the hazardous journey to distant lands then find themselves fighting a different battle, that of being identified simply as the Syrian refugee artist. And although conflict has led to the creation of many masterpieces, these artists refuse to be pigeonholed simply as transcribers of atrocities. Syrian painters, writers, filmmakers and performing artists have always had a place on the international scene. For some, their careers began long before the civil war erupted in 2011. For others, it's because of the war that their work has gained notoriety. Regardless, the one thing this creative diaspora share is the use of their creative skill and imagination to capture and express works of beauty while provoking powerful emotions no matter what the narrative. Artist Muhammad Zaza uses his brush to create a different reality of the world we live in. Currently living in Istanbul, his work explores the unconventional world, which nothing is what it seems. His aim, to show another dimension of life, his weapons of choice, paintings and animations. Introducing us to another dimension of life, Muhammad uses big canvases, with some of his paintings measuring up to two meters across. I like the material, it's very flexible. I can like move it also very easy. And it's light also. And uh, I like the texture of the acrylic when I put it in the this kind of thicker canvas, it's good, it's, it's give us very good, like, surface. Imagination rules his world, a world in which he crosses borders and creates his own reality. But the hardest question for him is how to define his style. Actually, I don't have like style. I don't like to look at it and search to my style. I'm just a painter. I start that for a long time when I was a child with, because of my father. He was an artist and all my knowledge, I try to, to express it like in this way. Maybe because I cannot like speak well, or maybe because I cannot write well, or like I feel the visual things, it's uh, more easy to, to talk with the people. While he was studying at the Faculty of Fine Arts in Aleppo, Zaza also took animation classes. A few years later, when he fled Syria and had more free time to explore, he discovered his love for this type of expression. It was like uh, just to, to show some memory in that time in Syria, the last time in Aleppo specifically. And there's some scenes in my studio there and I try to, to make it alive because after the revolution I, I felt like everything is you know, destroyed of you know, also the memory, also the dreams and I felt it's good to make like, like uh, a live scene. 
Rather than talking about it, Zaza uses his art to express how Syria's raging war affects him. I think something very personal and I would like to don't talk about it and it's uh, yani also I would like to don't share to anybody yani, what I am feel exactly with some memory in Syria just Syrian people they know that and enough talking about this Through his art, Muhammad is keeping the window to a world where no physical rules apply, open for us. For many cultures, storytelling goes beyond the art form of children's fables. It's a way to preserve and share personal history and traditions. In 2015, artist author Gaith Mufaid started writing a personal account of a trip to his ancestral village along the Black Sea. But the book was only the beginning of a much deeper artistic journey. My great-great-grandfather was the counselor of the Sultan Abdul Hamid, and his son was assigned by the Turkish uh, Sultan Murat Mehmed V. He was assigned to do his duty in, in Medina, in Saudi Arabia. And after finishing his duty, uh, he was going back to Trabzon. And he, stayed in the, he stayed in Damascus. Uh, he, he got married with a girl from Ankara. And my, after that, my grandfather was born, Mohammed. Um, in the 60s, in the early 60s, my grandfather started exchanging messages with his cousins in Trabzon. And in the 86, he was able to visit his dad's family, his dad's village in Trabzon for the first time. He met his relatives, he took pictures, he wrote a diary that I was able to find after 30 years. What made you embark on this journey to rediscover your roots? Last year, uh, after my grandfather's house in Syria was bombed, uh, he, this diary was found by my cousin and was sent to me. And after I read it, uh, I, decided to, I decided to go to Trabzon and do exactly the same trip, exact same things. After I went to Trabzon and I met, I walked through the same roads, I ate the same food, I took pictures in the same places with the same people or the next generations. I was walking between the mountains and uh, I started writing my book, The Journey of a Cell from the Black Sea to the Sea of Reality. After I came, like, his, like he wrote his diary, I started writing my book there. Your genealogical exhibition is called The Value of a Cell. Can you tell us a little bit about the story behind it? The Valley of a Cell is the first part of my longer ongoing project, The Journey of a Cell from the Black Sea to the Sea of Reality. The Value of Value is an artwork that I had in, in my show, The Value of a Cell. Uh, it's a computer-generated uh, Arabic calligraphy painting. And it's an Assyrian saying in Arabic, uh, roughly translated as, If the precious is lost, let there be no regret if the meretricious has vanished too. Meretricious, what's apparently attractive, having no value from the inside. Uh, imagination is the beautiful window that connects us to the things we cannot reach. Do not wait until the valuable things in your life become something that you can only see through that window. Uh, it's about knowing the real value of things around us before we lose it. If I lose my phone and after that I lose my pen, I would not feel the pen's value. It become like valueless because the precious thing has been lost already. I started thinking about this after my uh, uncle was executed in Damascus. Uh, I left my city, uh, my city Duma in Damascus suburb with him and we ran to Damascus and he bought me a ticket out of the country and after he bought me the ticket he was executed. Since then uh, it's not just that we knew how valuable my uncle was in us, he changed the value counters in us. So everything else's value became less. So after, after going, in my, like, going through my journey uh, in the Black Sea region, uh, I was feeling the value of things I was doing. So I was able to engage the value with the journey, so it became the value of a cell. Talking about this cell, that always leaving the Black Sea, leaving wars and surviving and coming back, like in a way or another. Tell us a little bit about the plant that you called Bayer Flu. What inspired the name and what makes it so special? 
Well, Beyoğlu is a part uh, filled with earth from the Istanbul neighborhood Beyoğlu and has seeds from my great-grandfather's house's garden in Trabzon. Uh, I've, I was able to bring seeds, original seeds, real seeds, from the real story I'm telling you in the book and plant it in the soil of the new life I'm building here in Istanbul for this cell to continue its journey and make something more beautiful in the future. This project, which started as a book, like I said, and then I started working on it, and uh, it got developed, and these three artworks I had in my show uh, came from the book. So I'm looking forward to make more art uh, and c continue this project. Yeah. Art transcends borders, nationalities, and even spiritual beliefs. It's the one universal language, apart from love, that can unite and inspire. Omar Berakzar knows that personally. He's the founder of Art Here Istanbul, an artist-run space for creative expression. Omar, hello and welcome. Hi. Hi. First of all, how do you find your new adopted home, Istanbul? How's life in Istanbul? Oh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> It's a wonderful city and it's uh, overwhelming and it's so big. So it's like, for us, I think I'm here now since 2012 and I feel that I just like had this only small fraction. So it's really, it takes time, but like we're trying, we're getting there someday. <laughs> getting there someday. It's a huge city. Yeah. So what are the role of artists in society, would you say? Uh, I don't know if like an artist if has a role. It actually is, has a participation in the society. So it's part of the society. He doesn't have to have a role. His existence, what he's doing, his participation in the society, that's maybe is like whether he know it or not is his role in society. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that art can be used for good? Can be a tool to make things better? Yes, I believe that this is maybe one of our maybe best alternative nowadays to, to reach or to talk about uh, issues we can't do it otherwise. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of uh, uh, things happening around us, political, social, yeah. uh, the whole things around us. I think through art it can really take you to another dimension and it, I think it's really important that people can get involved more and more in this kind of, in, in art in general, that will also take them away from this busy chaos in life. Yeah. Can it be a way to uh, speak out against oppression and things we're going through and maybe some things we can't actually say with words? Yes, of course. This is like was a, was a, a important part of our role of the art throughout the history, through throughout the Eastern Bloc, when there was Romania, then there's, there was a lot of art expression and movements which, us, we were, which tried to go around all forbidden, let's say, codes and try to uh, provide a way of expression for people. So, of course, it's super important to have this uh, means for people so they can really say what they want and the way they want it. Mm -hmm. Some Syrian artists are rebelling against the title Syrian refugee artist. What do you think? What are your opinions on this? I totally agree with them. I don't think the yeah. term it's even necessary. I, maybe? Necessary yeah. do not mean anything it's like if we want to go about this kind of definition of what's refugee what's an immigrant what's an what's it's completely in like you can't squeeze the syrian artist in this corner you say you're a refugee 
he's not a refugee at all. And that's, can you, then you're actually giving a refugee a description of maybe 60% of the, of the people, you know. If we count how many people are not from Istanbul living in Istanbul, can we say all of this refugee? When this refugee will end is like, right. I think it was like created after this mass wave of, uh, uh, let's say, immigration, mm -hmm. people fleeing the war in Syria. Right. And maybe then it was kind of created this uh, visual, let's say, phenomena where, where they wanted to give it a name. And I don't think this is a fair or a good way to continue with, the, with, with working with the case of the Syrian artist or any other artist. We don't have that as right. other refugees. Right. Uh, well, you created Art Here Istanbul. Tell us what you're trying to achieve with it and how is it going? Uh, in Art Here Istanbul, we, since I arrived in 2012, it was for me the most uh, interesting or like to say, surprised me that we know nothing about Turkey. We don't know anything about the people from Turkey even though we neighbors, even though we thought, okay, the best place to go to is uh, culture, which is almost the same as we, we uh, the culture we know, we discovered that no, this is not the case. Oh, interesting. Yes, <laughs> so it's like there's big differences, which is yeah. uh, something you need to observe and you need to live in, so to understand what are the differences. So within, the first year here, year and a half, I was trying to understand and I thought, okay, we are the artists, the artists after the revolution, we want to create something, we want to, we are free now. So why not trying to express in a more, in, a, in, a, in, a, in this atmosphere, in mm -hmm. Turkey, in Istanbul. And for me, it was very essential, very important to create a place where he can make be a hub where you can link Syrian artists with artists from Turkey with artists from elsewhere all over the world. So it's like a place where you can, we can all meet, we can know each other, we start to know how, uh, where, where are the differences, where are the points in common, so we can actually have a discussion, so we can, so it's actually this place, this uh, art here is trying to be Hopefully, when we get enough uh, support also, uh, to be a place where we can provide support for Syrians to emerge, to uh, be part of the international art scene in Turkey and elsewhere, not only in Turkey. Just out of curiosity, you said uh, we've, I found loads of differences where I wasn't expecting them. What differences and what similarities have you found? Uh, for example, it's like we we'll, we'll say something very uh, simple. It's like we say, okay, we have uh, dolma. We do. Oh, yabra. Mm -hmm. We do in Syria. Mm -hmm. And you say, wow, we have the same food. But when you taste it, it's, like, it's different. It's not the do it's not the oh. mahshi or the what we call mahshi. We call the dolma. It's different. Oh, I didn't know that. It's completely different taste. Okay, I'll have to and taste they, the Syrian one <laughs> <and> <laughs> at first chance. <laughs> So it's like it's a small example on the food, but it's like this can apply on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Especially in art, we see that, for example, there's web. If we want to give an example, that's, there's a, the illustration art is very advanced here in Turkey, while it's almost very, do, almost do not exist in Syria. Okay. Omar, just last question for you. Um, can art be used to make a better future? Do you believe in that? Is, that? is it just expression or does it serve a purpose? What is it in your opinion? In my opinion, actually, that's uh, going out of this, uh, what's happened to Syria, knowing Syria, how beautiful it was. 
and knowing that also it was necessary what's happening and that for the people to have their freedom. I think it's seeing all the international reaction that they so far after five years they haven't managed to solve this problem. It's not a problem, it's crisis, it's a crisis, it's a big right. uh, shame on humanity not to solve it so far with all these casualties. Mm -hmm. So I think I started to disbelieve in this kind of all this political efforts and I thought okay maybe the only way it's the power of the people, of the artists, where they can really go find an alternative way of expression and proving a point and making a difference. So I think alternative art, art spaces, collectives, art centers. In art, you have no differences. You have no sects, you have no religion. You are dealing in art, so it's like Right. Okay, the, there's more what, uh, which can make you gather you than... I haven't heard that somebody killed somebody else because he did, didn't agree of his school of art. Right. Like serialism. <laughs> very no. true. So disillusion in politics but belief in art. Omar Berakda, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. <laughs>of musicians from various parts of Syria have found each other in Istanbul. Anyone who's strolled down Istanbul's busiest and most colourful street will have heard the distinct sounds of Domsek. The group performs classical Arabic songs from Umm Kathum and Fairuz to both domestic and international audiences along Istiklal Avenue. <laughs> These musicians go by the name of Domsek, the Turkish word for the Syrian city of Damascus. The band found each other by chance, and every day since 2014, they get together and perform on Istiklal Street. Basil Khalil is the band's guitarist and leader. And Khalid Al Halabi plays the accordion. with Milad Mughrabi on percussion, followed by saxophonist Oruk Daoud. <laughs> and Mohammed Durgham plays the oud. I was playing on Esklal Street, and the guys saw me, Basil, Milad and Khalid, and some of the others. We were all performing and figured out, why don't we perform together? One day, I approached the guys and told them, Hey guys, I'm also from Syria. I play alone. Can I join you? They asked me, what do you play? I said, the saxophone. And they were like, okay, join us. I was unemployed and really annoyed about it. I was walking with my friend on the Istiklal, and I saw my friend Muhammad holding his instrument. He took my number down, and the next day he called me, saying, hey, the band wants to meet you, come play. One of the original members, Khalid, also plays to support his family. I have my wife and three kids here with me. My three kids are studying. I have no other source of income but my street music. I won't lie to you. What I do in the streets when I perform, I live. But if I miss a day, I can't afford my life. Basil has been composing and teaching for 22 years. He taught flamenco guitar at the Russian Cultural Center in Damascus. Unlike the other group members, he stopped in Egypt before coming to Turkey. The band relies on him to create their musical style. His focus is on Arabic classics. 
We always perform songs that have a connection with our history and our memories. Many of the people that stop to listen to us are Syrians that come to Istanbul, but also people from all over. Young and old, everyone stops to listen. Turks also stop to listen because our heritage is similar to theirs. The band plays a mix of songs, ranging from classical love melodies by two of the most important voices in the Arab world, Um Khalthoum and Feyruz, to Syrian national anthem. Their performance attracts large crowds of pedestrians. None of the group members romanticize their work. They would all prefer to have stable jobs and perform professionally. But in the meantime, they're always in search for the next spot to perform. Armed with their instruments and their love of music, the guys are determined to give Istiklal a little bit of Domsek flavor. We hope you've enjoyed our special on Syrian artists for this edition of Showcase. I'm Özlem Şiten from all of us here at TRT World Istanbul. Thank you for watching and see you next time.